This morning, we are continuing our study of the Holy Spirit, and uh, over the course of the summer months here, we've been looking at what Scripture tells us about who He is and what He does. We've been learning more about His ministry and, and uh, just the, the various ways that the Holy Spirit ministers to us as believers, as men and women who follow Jesus Christ and seek to honor Him in our day-to-day -day lives. The Holy Spirit takes a very active role in our living and in the, the growth of our faith. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit has a ministry of comfort. And so I want us to be thinking applicationally and also doctrinally about what this means and why Scripture describes the Holy Spirit as a comforter, why He's spoken of in this, in this fashion. And what I'd like to do for starters here, uh, typically I, I preach out of the English Standard Version, that's the version we have there in our, in our seats, but I want to read this morning's scripture from the King James Version, and this morning I'm going to be reading from John chapter 14, I'm going to pick up at verse 16 and I'm going to read down to verse 18, and this is, this is what it says in John chapter 14, starting with verse 16, it says this to us. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word, and we thank you for the privilege that it is to be able to look at this portion of Scripture together today, along with so many other Scriptures that we'll be spending some time in together today. And we pray that as we look at your word, that you'd help us to understand what we're reading and what we're, what we're thinking about here. We pray that as we speak about this, this aspect of the Holy Spirit's ministry, that we would see what He does in our lives, that we would understand the nature of the comfort that He provides, and that we would see the various ways that you, you illustrate in Scripture that comfort is something that will be ministered to with as the Spirit does His work. So, Father, thank You so much for the privilege to just think about these things today. And, Lord, if there be any area of our life where right now in particular we're seeking comfort, we're seeking the guidance that your Spirit can grant us. We, we ask that from you, Lord. We pray that you would supply that. We pray that that would be something that you would, in your mercy, choose to minister to us with. And we thank you for the privilege to be able to speak about these things and think about these things together today. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I think I've mentioned this a few times, even recently, but when I was a young child, I was very close with my extended family. I was pretty grateful that we all lived in the same geographical area, so it really wasn't much for us to be able to get together and spend time together and, and hang out, and so that's what we would do. We would make a point to get together frequently. Different family members would sometimes use a real holiday as an excuse for us all to get together, and sometimes we'd just invent one. Sometimes we'd get together for a birthday party, and sometimes we'd get together for no reason at all. It was a facet of my childhood that I look back at and I'm very, very fond of, and uh, sometimes we would get together at my family's homes. Other times we would host these things at our home, and, uh, and I remember when my parents would tell me that, you know, everybody was coming over, that my grandparents were coming over, how excited I would get, how excited I would get that my cousins were coming over, all of that. Few things excited me more. And I, I remember one particular visit when a whole bunch of family members were arriving at once, and I was trying to think if this was for a holiday or if it was for a birthday, and I can't exactly remember that part, but I do remember that my grandparents were the very first people to arrive at our house. We were hosting everybody that day, and I remember as their car pulled up, just being filled with excitement, I was so excited that they were there that without permission, without my parents' uh, uh, approval, I just started running toward their car, and we happened to have a gravel driveway at the time, and unfortunately, I didn't make it very far, and I fell face forward onto that gravel driveway. Now, 
amazingly, I didn't damage my face. Some of you were like, are you sure you didn't? And it's like, no, I'm positive I didn't. Um, my hands and my knees, I, I did a lot of injuring to. My knees in particular, I remember after I hit the ground, at first I was just stunned, and then I instinctively got back up, but then I stood there and froze. And I remember being in such pain. I know childhood is an era, a season of scraped knees, but I was particularly scraped from that gravel driveway. And I just froze there waiting for someone to figure out what my next step was going to be. I didn't have a solution for the gravel and the cuts and everything that was all over me. And so I pull myself up off the ground. I stand there and almost immediately, my mother and my grandmother brought me into the house. They saw what had happened. They brought me into the house. I remember they, they cleaned up my wounds and they brought me comfort until I was able to calm down. It's a very distinct memory. I have in my early childhood, I was probably four or five years old at the time. And I look at that and I think, all right, it's probably, I mean, first of all, it's great, we're grateful in our childhood when there are people like that that comfort us when we need comfort. But it's not just your childhood when you need comfort. You need comfort more than just in your childhood. In fact, many people would argue there are seasons of your adult life where you need it an extra dose, maybe even more than you felt like you needed when you were a child. And so I wonder, do you have some people in your life at present right now that you would say, yes, that person is a very comforting presence to me. That person brings me comfort. That person is, is someone who, who actively ministers to me with compassion and mercy. Uh, this season of my life, I, with, without a doubt, my wife serves that role for me. And uh, there have been quite a few times I could testify to the fact that I have felt either anxious or angry or sad or something of that nature. And she made a point to either talk me through what I was wrestling with or just listen as I was speaking one time. And I still don't know how she did this, but I remember one particular time I was feeling a bit worked up and she said, here, here, just come over here by me. And I, I'm not saying she's a magician, okay? I know she's not, but this is what she did. I still don't know how this worked. And don't try this on me, okay? But she came, she came up and she put her hand on the back of my neck and just like for a few moments, just kind of like rubbed the back of my neck with her fingers and then I fell asleep. I kid you not, like I fell asleep and then I woke up soon after, I was like, how did that work? What did you just do to me? Like how do you have the, this power over me that you're able to just like touch the back of my neck for a moment and I'm out, right? Really happened, still trying to figure out how that one worked. But the Lord knows that you and I deal with all sorts of stressful and challenging moments throughout the course of our lives. The longer you live, the more things you learn to face. Sometimes you compare current trials to previous trials, and you can testify how the Lord brought you through the last one, so you know He's going to bring you through the current area of stress or the current challenge that you're experiencing. And the Lord's fully aware that we, that we deal with these things. I mean, it's not a mystery to Him that you and I deal with all sorts of challenges throughout the course of our earthly lives. And he also knows that there's going to be some people in your life or maybe some challenges that'll come your way that will test your faith or maybe even just directly come against you because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. There are some challenges you will experience in this world that are directly the result or directly related to the fact that you are an outspoken follower of Jesus Christ. And for those reasons and many others, we're assured that the Holy Spirit will be with us and will offer us His divine comfort. That's what Scripture tells us. That's what Jesus explained to us in John chapter 14. But there are other portions of Scripture that illustrate this for us really well. And what I wanted to do in our brief time together this morning is show you a sample of the various ways the Holy Spirit ministers to us with His comfort and how that comfort applies to all kinds of circumstances, maybe even a few that aren't the first things that would come to your mind. He comforts us. He does work around us that we can observe if we learn to look for these things. And one of the ways that the Holy Spirit comforts us is He comforts us simply through His presence. If you look at Romans chapter 15, verse 13, we're told this. We're told, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Now, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, extremely consequential. 
The fact that he's here, the fact that he's present with you and me, very consequential. We have not been left alone in this world to navigate life without help. That's a wonderful thing to think about at any season of life, regardless of our age. The Holy Spirit is present with us. He's also present within us. He lives within all who trust in Jesus Christ. When you look at the rest of the world, the rest of this world is walking by sight because that's ultimately all they have. They're walking by sight. They're trusting only what they can see with their own eyes. But we as believers in Jesus Christ have the privilege to walk by faith and to begin seeing things that aren't naturally seen. And as we continue this walk of faith, when you look at what Scripture tells us about what this looks like, we're assured that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, His power and His presence is going to be manifested in our lives in a variety of ways. And when you look at what we're told in Romans 15, verse 13, we're told that, that His presence in our lives fills us with hope instead of despair and doubt. Many people are going through their earthly lives consumed with despair, consumed with doubt. But again, we who live in proximity to the Holy Spirit because He lives within us, His presence in our lives fills us with hope instead of doubt, instead of despair. His presence in our lives, according to this portion of Scripture, also produces the fruit of joy instead of, like we could say, a dreadful dependence on our circumstances to somehow produce temporary happiness. I think many people are going through their lives in this world depending on their circumstances turning out just right to somehow produce a temporary form of happiness, but yet Scripture tells us, no, we can depend on the presence of the Holy Spirit to produce joy in our life that is far beyond temporary happiness that's circumstantial. We also know that the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives produces peace instead of worry. This is another aspect of what's brought up in Romans chapter 15. And this is what I've noticed in my own life, and maybe you've noticed this as well. In general, I don't consider myself an overly anxious person. But I can't tell you that there's never been a time in my adult life that I don't worry about something. You know, sometimes, and you find yourself doing it without realizing you're going to do it. Like I, I, and sometimes I like to even tell myself, oh, you're not somebody that really worries that much. And I think in general that's true, but sometimes things sneak up on me. And I find myself worrying, and I've analyzed something about myself that I think is probably true for all of us. This is when worry tends to take its, its deepest root in my life. Anytime I'm convinced that I have to do something arduous or hard or especially difficult alone, if I think I have to do it alone, if I think that I have no help, if I think that I'm on my own, if I've convinced myself to think that way, that produces worry. Now, I only realized that about myself just a few years ago. It's only been maybe about three years ago that that really became crystal clear in my mind that that's a catalyst for worry in my life. And one of the things that I'm grateful for when we look at the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit, He convinces us and demonstrates to us that we are not alone. I am not alone and you are not alone in this world. He comforts us through His presence. The fact that He comforts us through His presence also helps us defeat worry because He's assuring us that He's right here with us. He's not off at a distance. Many people in this world, they make the mistake if they even believe that God exists, they think of Him as distant. They think of Him as far away. They think of Him as living and existing in the heavens, but not living right here present with us or within us. And what did Jesus tell us about the Holy Spirit, about His ministry? That He would live within us. What is the Holy Spirit demonstrating to you and to me? That He lives within us, that He's present right here with us. That's a comforting thing. That's something for you and for me to hold on to and be assured of and encouraged by. But there's something else that Scripture tells us that is a very comforting aspect of the Holy Spirit's ministry. He also comforts us through prayer. Look at what we're told in Romans chapter 8 when you look at verses 26 and 27. There it says this. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Does your mind just wonder about what that is like? What is He doing? I mean, you know, He's interceding for us with groanings that are too deep for words. Scripture also says, And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. 
The Holy Spirit comforts us through prayer. Earlier this week, I received a phone call from someone that I consider a wonderful spiritual example. Years ago, uh, my senior year of college, I had the privilege to uh, work at a summer camping ministry, and the, the, the pastor and, and his wife that directed that ministry became really good friends, and what I noticed of uh, the pastor's wife in particular was that she was just a woman of prayer, completely, completely devoted to prayer. Do you ever meet people that are just, they seem so gifted in the way they know how to pray for people? And uh, for the past, I don't know, maybe about, um, maybe about a year or so, I've been just attempting to reach out to her. Uh, her husband recently passed away, and I wanted to talk to her and just see how she was doing and um, I didn't have the right number for her. And I, I got a call from her the other day because she heard that I was reaching out to her and she just had my family on her mind. And so she gave me a call the other day and she said, hey, I know you're busy. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, but I just thought I'd call real quick and uh, get caught up on what you're, you're doing, how the family's doing and stuff like that. Fill you in on some of the, the things going on in my life. And uh, by the way, do you know Sue Gill? Does anyone know Sue Gill? She lives out in Wisconsin, but she's from this area. Uh, maybe some of you do. Okay, uh, that's who this was. And she said, hey, I know you're busy, but while we're on the phone, can I just pray for you and for your family? And I said, yes, of course. And so uh, I just, I sat in my chair, I was at my desk, and uh, she was praying for me and for my family. And as she was praying for us, I just thought, what, what a gift she has to know the right questions to ask, so she gets dirt out of you. She should work for like government agencies because she'll get you to just start like spilling dirt and then she'll be like, now it's time for me to minister to your heart by praying for you and lifting these things all up to the Lord. And I'm like, yes, please do. And then after every conversation I have with her, I'm like, what a wonderful person to have in your life who just ministers to you that way, that knows how to ask the right questions and then takes the time to pray for you in such a thoughtful way and meaningful way. I, I mean, truly, this is an area that I think she's gifted with. And have you ever felt yourself in the midst of a season where you just weren't sure how to pray? Where you knew you needed to be praying about a variety of things. Maybe you were going through something that was particularly challenging, but because it was so emotionally difficult, you were having a hard time articulating the words. You're having a hard time of figuring out, like, Lord, how do I get my mind wrapped around this concept. I want to be bringing my needs before you, but I'm all messed up. Like, I'm all jumbled. I don't know the words to say right now. I don't know how to express this. Am I even covering the root issues, or am I just covering surface issues, Lord? I'm not even sure how I should be praying about this. I just know I need to lift it up before you. I think we've all probably found ourselves in seasons of life, hopefully brief, maybe sometimes longer, where we're just not quite sure how to pray. Maybe a trial, you know, maybe something else that's just weighing on your heart. And isn't it a relief, when you look at Romans chapter 8, isn't it a relief to know that the Holy Spirit helps us in the midst of those seasons by interceding on our behalf and making sense of our messy prayers? Isn't that a wonderful thing? That comforts my heart, to know that I don't have to articulate every word exactly right for God to hear me. The Holy Spirit looks at my mess, and He looks at your mess, and He says, let me, let me come alongside you with this. Let me pray on your behalf in a way that's deeper than words you could articulate and deeper than words that you could even understand. Let me pray on your behalf that way. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes in prayer for us like that. And what he's also doing, I believe, is he's aligning our requests so that, that we begin praying in accordance with God's plan and God's character. Because it says here, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I believe he's aligning our requests, bringing our requests in line with God's will and God's character. When we go through those seasons where we're saying, I don't even feel like I know how to pray right now. Or I'm too, I'm too, I'm, I'm hurting too deeply where all I feel I can do is just kind of open up prayer and then start weeping before the Lord. Do you ever have a season like that? And here the Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf in the midst of those seasons. That's a comfort. Something else God's Word reveals to us about His ministry of comfort is this. He comforts us through the Word of God. We're told in, in John chapter 16, starting with verse 12, Jesus said, 
I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Um, I'm grateful that we have access to the Word of God. I got an email yesterday from somebody, and he said, hey, John, what, what Bible translation do you like reading best? And that's a funny question to ask me, because if you go in my office here, you'll discover that I have a lot of different translations. I think I counted the one time, I think there's 40 different Bibles I have on that top shelf, and then sometimes I find Bibles that I didn't exactly remember that I bought. And I'm like, oh, I forgot I bought this one. And, I'll, I'll find, and so he said, well, which version do you like? And I said, I'll be honest with you, I like a lot of versions. But I told him my top three. I said, all right, my favorite one to read for accuracy, I like reading the ESV. And I said, and when I like to read for accuracy and readability, I like to read the CSB. And when I like to read primarily just for readability, I like to read the NLT. And then I looked, and my message to him was five minutes after he sent his first email. And he's like, wow, that was quick. I was like, hey, I aim to serve, you know, <laughs> especially when we're talking about the Bible, kind of, kind of a big fan. But I have to say, I'm grateful that we have access to the Word of God. We have greater access to the Word of God than ever before. My eyes are getting bad. I just turned 47. When I hit 45, I needed reading glasses. I waited a year before I bought them. I just had headaches for a year. So 45 to 46 headaches, 46 to 47, I got the glasses. But I don't know if anyone noticed, I got a brand new copy of the Bible. Large print, baby, right? Look at this. You can read this from the back row, can't you? And, uh, and I look, I'm just, I think to myself, like, we have such wonderful access to the Word of God living in this era of history, on your phone, on your computer, as many printed copies as you could, as you could desire. And here's the thing. If we were trying to read and understand the Word of God without the Holy Spirit's guidance, I'm not certain that we would know how to really apply or understand what we're reading. I think one of the reasons that the Holy Spirit is ministering to us the way that He does in this era of history is so that we would understand what we're reading, so that we would internalize what, what's actually being spoken of here. He intervenes on our behalf to make the truth clear. That's what Jesus said a part of His ministry would be. And Jesus explained that the Holy Spirit, what He would do during this era of history for you and for me, is He would guide us toward and help us understand what is true. Now, during the era of the early church, what you had the Holy Spirit doing in setting some of this up and also fulfilling this was inspiring the writers of the New Testament to convey the very teaching that it contains, just as He did for the writers of the Old Testament. And now He helps us understand what's been written. And he helps us to understand it so that we can apply it to our lives and live it out. And I'm also convinced that if we come to a space in our life where we value the teaching of God's Word, if you're somebody that actually cares enough, I was thrilled this past week we had our Wednesday night Bible study. We kept running out of chairs. We had to keep, three times we had to add an additional chair. It was really fun to see that. And I'm thinking, all right, why would people care about that? Why would that be something that people would carve out time to be part of? It's because we desire to hear the Word of God. And the unbelieving world treats Scripture like it's a fantasy tale. They look at it like it's not something of value, even though by and large, many people, if you really force them to admit it, would have to admit that they haven't actually even read the Scriptures. They're just going off of what they think the Scriptures actually contain. But many people treat it like it's just a, a fantasy tale. I even had a relative of mine several years ago say, yeah, I don't really pay much attention to the Bible. It's all parables. So he said, it's all parables. Now, if you've read the Bible, you realize it's not all parables. You've got law, history, poetry, prophecy, uh, letters, and some parables. But they take up like a very small part of, of other parts of Scripture. And I, I thought, okay, making that blanket statement, yeah, it's all parables. It's like, no, it's not all parables. And for someone to say that tells me, okay, I guess you haven't actually read it. But we who are indwelled by the Holy Spirit, what does He do? He points us toward the truth, and I think He helps us value the Word of God. I don't think I'd even care about this 
enough to own a copy of the Bible, let alone take time to read it, if the Holy Spirit didn't shape that desire within me. And I know he's doing that for so many of you as well. He's shaping that desire. He's creating a hunger and a thirst within you to read the Scriptures. And what do we discover as we read the Scriptures? Wisdom from God for every circumstance of life. By the way, do you want a good definition of wisdom? Do you ever pray for wisdom? I think sometimes real wisdom is when we learn to apply the Scriptures to our day-to-day circumstances, very simply. When you take what God has revealed and you learn how to apply it to your day-to-day life. That's wisdom. And you don't even have to be old to have that kind of wisdom. You could be a real young person who takes the time to read the wisdom that God gives us in His Word, and you can learn with the Spirit's help to apply it to your day-to-day life. And what does He do is we internalize the Scriptures. Through the Word of God as the Spirit ministers that truth to our hearts, does He not comfort us through the Word? He most certainly does. Have you ever come across something in Scripture that you weren't even looking for? I read something last night from the book of Nehemiah. And I'm just reading in Nehemiah, and, I'm, and I came across, I was like, wow, that was exactly the right thing I needed to read at exactly the right time. And I love when the Lord does that, and I believe the Spirit of God is pointing us toward the truth just as Jesus said He would do. And He uses the Word of God to do that very thing. But that's not the only way He comforts us. Scripture also tells us when you look at places like 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that the Holy Spirit comforts us through His guidance. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, we're told this. The natural person, so this is talking about who we are apart from being reborn through Jesus Christ. The old you, the natural person, the unregenerated person. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. They have to be spiritually discerned. Years ago, I was on the cusp of adulthood. I remember this was during my college years. And uh, that camping ministry that I mentioned just a few moments ago, I I remember I had a, a few days open in my summer schedule. And so I volunteered to serve with that ministry just to see if they needed anything around the property. Do you need anything fixed? Do you need anything mowed? You want anything organized, painted, whatever they needed. And, uh, and I volunteered, and they said, yes, actually, we do need some painting done. And so, uh, and there happened to be a missionary who was volunteering up there. It's one of the missionaries our church supports, Brian Fink. He happened to be up there at the same time. And, uh, and he was volunteering that day as well. And so the two of us decided, hey, let's just work together for the day. And, and one, of our, one of our big projects that day was to just partner up and paint the, the chapel together. It needed a coat of exterior paint. So it's like, let's see if we could paint this entire building in one day. And as you could guess, you know, we had plenty of time to talk as we're just, just standing there painting, trimming, doing all those things. We had plenty of time for conversation all throughout the course of the day. I think I was probably about 19 years old as this was taking place. And we were talking about all sorts of life issues during the course of the day. And so I started talking to him about some of my life and some of my future ministry plans And I remember one of the things in particular that I had a lot of questions for him about, because I just started dating this girl named Andrea, Um, I asked him his perspective toward marriage, and even, how do you know that you found the right person that you're supposed to marry? And so I remember Brian and I painting that chapel, talking about life, talking about marriage, talking about some of his experiences, because he's about five or six years older than me. And I remember he gave me a lot of great counsel that day. And many of the details of that conversation have stayed with me for decades. And I believe, as I look back at that, I believe that the Holy Spirit orchestrated our meeting and our conversation on that summer afternoon, that we would end up working together, that we would show up at that camp that same time. And what I think the Holy Spirit does for you and me all throughout the course of our lives is that He continues to offer us guidance and steer us in important directions during all, th- all sorts of seasons so that we would understand things and be exposed to things that are not naturally understood. Now, naturally speaking, we would not value His guidance. Naturally speaking, we wouldn't value His leading. Naturally speaking, we would just make the assumption, oh, I just decided one day to go and paint a chapel at a camp. And then you realize, no, I think the Holy Spirit put that idea in my head and that desire in my heart and did the same thing in Brian's mind and in his heart so that we would meet together that day and there would be wisdom that was conveyed from him 
to me at a pivotal season of my life. And what we discover the longer we walk with the Lord is that the Holy Spirit, He's guiding us. He's guiding your life. He's guiding your thinking. He's exposing you to things that you would not have naturally sought out or understood. And I think as we humbly listen to His voice, and this is key, as we live in obedience to what He's clearly revealed in Scripture, if He makes something very clear to us in Scripture, and we choose to live in obedience to what He's clearly revealed, what's going to happen is you and I are going to grow in spiritual discernment. That discernment is going to grow like it speaks of in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, like Paul is referencing there. And the guidance of the Holy Spirit becomes a form of comfort that we, that we experience throughout the course of our lives, where you start to realize, you know what? I don't have to figure this all out on my own. The Holy Spirit, He's going to guide me. I find that comforting. I find it comforting knowing that He's already got things planned out for me, and meetings that he's got arranged for me, and directions he's going to point me in, and thoughts he's going to pop into my mind so that I have a desire to do something that's going to seem like a chance encounter to meet with somebody else, and then before you know it, it has a major impact on a certain area of your life and your walk with him. The Holy Spirit guides us, but that's not the only way he's comforting us. Scripture also tells us that he comforts us in times of trouble. Now, when you look at what Scripture says in Romans 5, verses 3 through 5, we're told this. It says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? To be able to see what the Holy Spirit is doing. Because seasons of suffering certainly aren't our preferred seasons of life. You and I don't desire to go through seasons of suffering. I've been noticing, though, there's something uh, that I've been noticing at this season of my life, and the Lord's been revealing this to me more and more as time goes by, and maybe you're experiencing the same exact thing, but I can tell you from personal experience that the older I get and the longer that I've been walking with Jesus the more able I feel to maintain a joyful attitude even while heavy things are taking place. At an earlier season of my life, I think I needed those things to resolve before I truly was in a spot where I could say I was really joyful. The longer I've been walking with the Lord, the more He's been able to help me to maintain joy even before the resolution comes. Now, in recent years, I could testify from my own life that I've experienced seasons of of grief, primarily to the loss of loved ones. Maybe you've experienced some of those things as well in recent years. I've experienced seasons of loss. I could also list some things that I would say, yeah, I'd put that in a category maybe of unmet expectations. I've experienced trials, some due to my own decisions, some due to the decisions of other people. And I I imagine it's highly likely that you've experienced some of the same things, and maybe you'd even categorize some of your your difficulties or trials or troubles in the same category that I, I tend to put mine in. But if you find yourself able to rejoice while you're in the midst of these experiences, I believe that's because the Holy Spirit is pouring out the love of God into your heart through His comforting presence, just as we're told in Romans chapter 5. He's changing your perception. He's helping you to see beyond your momentary circumstances. He's reminding you that you're going to be okay and that your circumstances ultimately are going to resolve for God's glory and for your good. Something else I want to show us about the comfort of the Holy Spirit. He also comforts us through His assurance. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16, we're told, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You ever gone through a season of life where you felt distant from God? Maybe a a season where in your own insecurities you were tempted to wonder if the Lord treasures you like the Word of God says that He does, but you started to think, well, maybe I'm an exception. People that know me well know how annoying I could be, and the Lord knows me pretty well, so maybe I'm an exception to this, right? Maybe He doesn't treasure me the way I I, I want Him to. Do Do you ever begin to wonder things like, you know, at different seasons of your life, am I really part of the family of God? I mean, would would he look at me as just kind of an add-on, or am I really part of the family? 
Does he think of me like a daughter? Does he think of me like a son? Does he think of me like his child? It's God's desire that all believers in Jesus Christ experience the assurance of their salvation. He wants you and me to experience the assurance of our salvation. He wants us to walk with confidence in the knowledge that we have been welcomed into his eternal family through Jesus Christ, who we've been united to through faith. And a major facet of the Holy Spirit's ministry during this generation is to speak to our hearts and to help us to understand with certainty that we are children of God. He reminds us of this truth, and he, he tries to help us to understand that it's possible to have a deep and abiding personal relationship with him, that you don't have to think of yourself as distant from God, even if at a di different season of your life that's how you felt, or maybe you've been going through a season like this where you felt that way. I, I'll tell you what, in... Um, and what I have seen, most often people start to feel distant from God, not because he's pulled away from them, but because they're pulling away from him. And I had a conversation with somebody not too long ago where it became very clear to me that this person was dealing with shame in her life over a decision that she had recently made. And as a result, her solution was to pull away from God because she was feeling so much shame about her life choice. And then what happens in the midst of that? You start to say, well, am I really even a child of God? Is God even close to me? It's like God didn't go anywhere. God did not pull away from you. And one of the things Scripture tells us is that the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And there are times you're going to need the Holy Spirit to do that for you. If you're dealing with a season of shame over a mistake... If you're dealing with a season of regret, if you're dealing with a season where maybe, you know, like we mentioned a moment ago, you've got some unmet expectations and you're thinking, all right, Lord, I've submitted this all to you. Why did it not work out the way that I thought it was going to work out? And sometimes we start telling ourselves falsehoods, false gospels, where we're saying, well, maybe God's at a distance. Maybe he's not listening. Maybe I don't even really count among his children. And yet the Spirit of God, what does he do? He bears witness to our spirit that we're children of God. Why does he actively do that? He actively does that because he knows we need that assurance. In our insecurities, we need that, that assurance. And don't ever convince yourself that you're an exception to that. We all need that assurance. It's a ministry and it's a blessing of the Holy Spirit. But let me say one more thing as we finish up this morning. One final way that I'll list, even though there are more, one final way that I think is pivotal in a, in a moment like this, in a context like this, where we can really just thank the Lord that the Holy Spirit chooses to comfort us the way that he does. He comforts us through our bond with our church family. Let me read this for us from 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 12. We're told, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. I love that Scripture tells us this because as fellow believers in Christ, we're united to one another. We're united to the Spirit, we're united by the Spirit, but we're united to one another through the Spirit as well. We've been made one family through the ministry that the Holy Spirit is accomplishing in our lives. And I, I have to say, I would not want to try to navigate life without the relational help, without the guidance, without the friendship that I experienced through our church family. And, and I say that specific to our church, but also broadly when I think about my growing up experience, the role that my church family at my home church had in my life when I was in college and I was attending a church in Hatboro, Pennsylvania, uh, the ministry that that church had on my life during that season of life. You know, as I look at my church family in this season and, and in my childhood, I would not have wanted to try to navigate life without their presence. They have had, and we collectively as a church family have had, a huge impact on the quality of life that I have the privilege to lead, and I'm sure that many of us can testify the exact same way, because we're bound together by one Spirit. We're bound together by the Holy Spirit. And the cool thing is we're bound together. I don't know if you even like the person that you're sitting next to, but tough, because you're bound together with that person. Some of you jokingly are shaking your heads and saying, no, I don't like that person. I, deep down you do, because you wouldn't have joked that way in front of them if you didn't, right? And we're bound together by the Spirit, not only for now, but forever. 
This is a forever relationship that you and I are in together with each other as a church family. This is not just a momentary thing. There may be seasons when those relationships on this earth feel strained. There may be seasons where they feel strong. But the Holy Spirit can bring peace where there's conflict. He can bring comfort through the words and actions we express toward one another. And it's often through our church family that the Holy Spirit will minister to us. He ministers comfort to us through the bond that he's made together with us. She mentioned this online, and I'll just finish up with this. Anyone uh, friends with Bobby Joe Russell online? Bobby Joe mentioned this the other day. Many of you know that when, when uh, each of us have you know, different life concerns that maybe require surgery or health needs or other things like that, we do something called a care calendar here in the church where we say, all right, I may not be able to fix all your problems, but one thing our family can do tonight is make sure we take care of your meals. Anyone been a recipient of, of a care calendar? Don't you eat way, you put on like a lot of weight if you end up on the care calendar. Like people come back to the, uh, back to the church obese because the care calendar is full of all this delicious food and so we're sorry about that. We'll try and balance that out somehow. We're not sorry at all actually. But I, I, thought, I thought it was really special earlier this week. And just a testimony I think even to the world that uh, I saw Bobby Joe, what she posted online. She said, I just want to express publicly my thanks to our church family. She recently had surgery. She's recovering from that. And in the meantime, what have we been doing? Providing their family with meals in the midst of her recovery. One less thing to think about. And you look at that, and it may seem like a small thing, but it doesn't feel like a small thing when the meals are showing up to your house, when you're the one that had the surgery. And so she said, I just want to thank the Lord for my church family and how they blessed me and brought me comfort in the midst of this season. And I look at that, and is it not through our church family that frequently we, we experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit as he reminds us that we're united together and we have the option to serve one another and bless one another in a variety of ways. I am so grateful for the ministry of comfort that the Holy Spirit is accomplishing. And I'm so grateful that we as a church family have the, the, the privilege to experience that from him, but also participate in that together. And Jesus told us, Again, when you go back to John chapter 14, Jesus told us that when the Spirit come, what would he do? You know, Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And then when you get down to verse 18 of John 14, Jesus says what? I will not leave you comfortless. There are things in this world that you and I will deal with, sometimes momentary things, sometimes long-lasting things, that will be heavy things. You have not been left to this to deal with all this alone, and you and I have not been left in this world comfortless because the Holy Spirit, He lives within us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word and just for the privilege that it is to be able to look at it together and to really give thought to the things that you reveal to us in it. Lord, I'm just so thankful for the fact that you love us the way you do and the fact that that you're mindful of the challenges that we'll experience in this world. And Lord, we know that, that some in our church family are going through very challenging stretches, very challenging seasons right now, where maybe their prayers have felt so jumbled or messy or confused. And yet, what do you tell us in your word? You tell us that your spirit will intercede on our behalf. You tell us that we have not been left in this world comfortless. Your spirit is present with us, ministering to us directly and also inspiring our brothers and sisters in Christ to join together in that ministry of mercy. So thank you, Father, for that. And thank you for the privilege to live these things out as you demonstrate them to us. Thank you for the privilege to yield the allegiance of our mind and the affections of our mind over to you as your spirit points us in the direction of truth and he guides us and directs us so that we would understand the things we're reading in your word and so that we would discern wisdom from the words of other people that, that he's speaking through, people that we have the privilege to interact with. Lord, thank you so much for your presence with us right now through your spirit. And thank you for your love. We're just grateful for these reminders as we've been able to look at them together from your word today. We're grateful for all of these things and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.